quarterback Malik Rozier. Are you uh, are you spent a little bit? Am I spent? Um, no, nah, not really. I mean, it was hot. It's humid. It felt good. Um, it's like one of our practices. I mean, we were ready for that weather. I mean, they did a good job. I don't think many of the guys cramped. Uh, I mean, they were flying around making plays. So I mean, my hack was off to them. But no, nah, I mean, I feel great. Happy to win. Going to get some rest. Ready for the short week. So. Um, I mean, they're a very exotic defense. There's multiple times where they had a guy back uh, 10 yards off a of mine, and they walked the, we call it a wheel, they walked the wheel six yards under. And I mean, they did a good job of scheming us up. Uh, I mean, they took away a on multiple calls that we had, and they made me work the field, and Jeff and them made plays. I mean, they were a defense that we knew that would drop eight, so it made it a little difficult. There was more guys in throwing lanes, and they did a good job getting pressure and twisting and blitzing and just getting pressure on me. So. Um, the big thing was just my family and my friends. Um, I mean, when stuff like that happens, you really find out what you lean on. And uh, my sisters were there for me, my mom, even my dad. He texted me a lot. And I mean, it just just shows how much I love this game because when I was out there on the field, like, honestly, I didn't think about my dad. I mean, I, I love him so much, but like, when I'm out there on the field, my mind is blank. Like, all I care about is football and winning. And uh, I mean, for me, it was one of those feelings that it showed like that life is precious and that at any moment, your life can be taken from you. Um, they helped me a lot, and the biggest one, the coaches, you know, I didn't want to put too much of a burden, especially going to Notre Dame game on, like, Braxton and Amon and all them. So, I mean, the coaches were more here for me, and so was my family. So I wanted those guys to focus. I don't want them thinking about me. Am I going to focus? So, I mean, I, I kind of took the pressure off them. I really didn't tell them, and I don't even know if they even know to, to this day. So, I mean, for me, it's just focusing and doing my job and letting them do theirs, not trying to put other pressures outside of football on them. Well, behind twice by 14 points, basically what's going on that through your thinking at that point? Um, I mean, I, I told the offense, I said, let's execute, let's do our job. I mean, we have a great defense. They, I mean, they had some, some shots on us, and they did a good job. But, I mean, I knew Coach Diaz is one of the best in the business. I knew he would get our defense right, and we'd be successful. So I told the offense, don't panic, let's be fine, let's do our job. Let's methodically drive down the field to give us a shot, let's take it, and let's just come back and win this game. And, I mean, the line did a great job, and so did the backs and receivers. How good was it to get a monoball involved again with that? It was good. It was nice to see Amon go back to, old, to, to his old self. And we knew they were going to do a lot of press man. And um, coaches were telling me, listen, if they go press man, just give a guy a shot. And I did. I mean, him, he had a jump ball in the end zone. Cager made a big play. Um, they all had a great play. So I mean, it's just nice to see multiple guys getting touchdowns and getting, and getting the balls in their hands. Um, I think the biggest thing with him is just his route running and the way he leads and the commands. Um, I mean, he's, he's told multiple times that FSU game, he walked up to Coach Dugans and Coach Mark Rick and was like, I want the ball, give me the ball. So they called a play where he was, our, he was my second read, he wound up coming open. So the biggest thing with Braxton is just the way he runs his routes. He's very smart, he's very good at recognizing coverages, and he knows the weak points in certain coverages. So there's certain times where he's supposed to run a route, but he knows that there's a guy outside him, so he'll settle it down in the hole and just give me a nice target to throw to. So that's the biggest thing. Braxton's just so football smart, and he just plays with such passion and enthusiasm. He's just a great guy to be around. You have this uncanny ability to put the last play behind you and not let it affect the next one. Yeah. Has, have you always been like that, or is that something you have to work on? Or? Um, definitely something I had to work on, you know, because um, when you're battling for a position, anytime you throw a pick, it's terrible. Um, and that's kind of what I had to go through. I had to go through is just letting plays go, don't let it, don't let it affect it, because that last play, it, it might affect the next play, which can wind up. Um, costing us the game. So the big thing was just letting the play go. I mean, the coach is such a great job of just keeping my head level, talking to me. The guys do a great job. Coach Diaz, even the defense talks to me. So the biggest thing is just the communication that we have just around this ball club is just great. And they keep my head level. And, and I just go out there and make plays for the guys. There's a lot going on in that moment where the punt and the fumble and Travis Homer comes up the ball. So you guys know you're going out there. Yeah. What was it like seeing him get the turnover <laughs> become the first guy on offense to get it? <laughs> no, it was actually nice. Um, I'm pretty sure I was on the field clapping for him, <laughs> actually. Um, but, I mean, it's nice to see the offensive guy get a turnover chain. You know, I've, I've been asked more times, have I, like, what the turnover chain? No, I haven't. Um, I don't think I ever will. But, um, no, nah, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice to see certain guys, especially for Travis to be a starter, contributing in special teams and just shows you how well-rounded these, these, these guys are. So. Talk about your touchdown run and weaving through the defense. <laughs> Um, you know, Coach Coach Mark Rick calls a dude ad is when somebody gets shaken, and uh, 
not much of a do that guy. I'm more of a bob and weave is what we call it because I, I don't really stick my foot in the ground. But, I mean, for me, that was such an offensive line play. You watch guys blocking five, six, seven yards downfield. Tyler got the was leading me in. So, I mean, the biggest thing for me was just set up their blocks, and they did a good job of driving, and, and it was just a great job of the offensive line. We knew they were going to twist, and, and they picked it up right because if the line doesn't communicate and pick that twist up, I'm probably getting sacked for, like, a four-yard loss. So, I mean, it's just that whole play was about the offensive line. It had nothing to do with me. I mean, I just, just ran the ball and just followed my offensive lineman. Um, senior class. That's hard. There's, there's a lot of stuff with these guys. I mean, I came in with these guys. I remember freshman year, just trying to figure out where I was going. Um, I remember being late to being late to class and having sunrise. And I mean, it's been such a long ride with these guys. And I think the biggest thing is just these guys stuck with it. They didn't give up. I mean, we've been with the lows when when we just couldn't win. It was hard to find a way to win, and now we're undefeated. So the big thing was these guys, they stuck with it. They um, they led, and, and I was paying off these guys. So, I mean, I, I appreciate them so much for staying. Well, we you've been to Pittsburgh how many times with Once. Once, and it felt unreal. And I know it's going to snow, possibly, so I'm not looking forward to that. Um, I mean, the biggest thing is just a lot of these guys are from South Florida, so they haven't seen snow. And the, the only time I've ever seen snow was the El Paso game. It was miserable. It was bad. Um, <laughs> But I mean, um, just a lot of these guys got to make sure, like Amon Richards, a lot of the receivers and, and special, like um, the receivers and running backs, that they stay warm because I don't want to go to the sidelines just chilling like it's in Miami, and they come back and they're pulling hamstrings and stuff. So make sure they stay on the bikes and stay warm. But I feel like we'll be fine. Pitt's gonna they're gonna throw stuff at us just like Virginia did. We just got to respond and play well. How about the new star? I just want to ask about the also new star because obviously the chemistry is kind of different, right? You were used to a night game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, personally, I like noon games because we practice in the morning. So it's nice just to get up, get going, get it done with because sometimes I don't get home till 2.30 at night. So it's nice to just go home rest. I mean, my little sister's here for the first time, so I'm going to go spend time with her. So it's been nice to be around with family now. But didn't it seem like you guys were, like, out of sorts? Nah, not really. I mean, Virginia did a great job. If you go back and watch the film, when, when they were scoring and stopping us, they, they threw some different coverage at us. Um, I mean, it took us a while to figure it out. They're a very exotic defense. They're, they're a 3-4 defense, so they can do a lot more stuff than what we're used to. And I mean, number six for them, their quarterback made great plays. He did a lot of scramble drills, which um, we got to get better at. I mean, even for me, I got to get better at throwing on the run. But I mean, they came out, took their shots, and our defense settled down, adjusted, and so did the offense. So. Thank you. Thank you.